Let's talk about time code, SMPTE time code, MIDI time code. Uh, basically, SMPTE time code, LTC, uh, audio time code, all the same thing in the sense that you have a audio signal coming out of a laptop, a tablet, whatever, uh, cell phone, tape player, CD player, doesn't matter. Any type of audio time code that that comes out gets fed into a decoder. That's what these two devices are: is a uh, audio time code to MIDI time code. Uh, uh, decoder. So basically I've bought both of these devices. This is the uh, NX Sync and this is the Motu uh, Express uh, XT. Uh, originally I've had for years uh, was the, the Motu Micro Express and the way that this works is you bring audio time code. This one uses a TRS jack coming in and then it would convert to MIDI timecode and it could come out of these MIDI uh, ports or it could come out of USB and that could feed directly into your computer. Now, uh, things that I have always not liked about this device are uh, the following. One, you have to have dedicated AC power, so it's one more thing that you have to plug in when you go to a venue and set up. Uh, the other thing is, is that it uses a TRS jack instead of an XLR jack, so it's non-locking. So the uh, the connector can pull out if you have this all in a flight case or, or in you know some sort of packaging you know permanently uh, you have to watch out that you know that connector doesn't fall out I mean even a um, IEC connector like this you know it's not locking anything can can wiggle out when when you're transporting things so that's that's a worry uh, the other thing is size. These are fairly decent sized and heavy devices. You know, uh, it doesn't seem so much in a singular device like this, but when you have all these different components that make up your, your front of house rig, it adds up. Uh, the uh, the last thing is is that the Mo2 devices require a dedicated software uh, uh, called Clockworks, uh, which is this software right here, that actually converts the... Uh, uh, the USB signal coming out into the computer to then talk to all of your other uh, your other software. So it uh, is not a generic plug and play device. You do have to have a dedicated software. Now, um, what I've done to get around that over the years is I've I've purchased this little box right here. Uh, this is called a T box uh, two by two, and this is this is a generic plug and play device. You don't need any drivers. It just plugs in and it just works straight out of the gate. So basically, you go to a venue, plug in power, plug in your time code coming out of your laptop or whatever you have. Um, that audio signal comes in and then it converts it to USB uh, MIDI. Uh, time code and then your lighting desk could see it. So I have a show coming up that I actually need to have two time code decoders uh, for what I'm doing. So this is my old one that I use and I still use it and it's working uh, fantastically. But I had to get something uh, more recent uh, to do this job and looking on the market there is still the Motu devices. This is the, the Motu Express XT and uh, this device unfortunately is larger now they still do make the micro however the micro is unavailable right now and we're still in times of shortages and things are having trouble getting shipped and i was able to get this one in a couple days and this box in a couple days and the micro was just unavailable at the time of this making of this video anyway so what i want to demonstrate is um why i thought this device was going to solve all my issues again one fits in the palm of your hand two uh has xlr connectors which is fantastic three it's powered over by usb so you don't need any other external power which is fantastic um and lastly you don't need any external drivers. There's nothing worse than being on a location and forgetting that some somebody brings in a lighting uh, laptop uh, running some specific software, whether it be HOG or MA or um, ETC, ION or whatever. I think ION has it on PC software. Not really sure. I don't really deal with ETC too much uh, unless I'm going to a venue that has an old like uh, Insight or uh, Express or something like that. So I'm not really too familiar with um, if ETC has a PC version, but if it does, you know, again, the same thing. You don't want, if somebody brings in a computer um, that's not a full size console that has a dedicated SMPTE uh, import, then, you know, you have to use one of these devices. So the way that this device shows up is um, because this is a generic plug and play device, it just shows up as a MIDI device and MIDI timecode just, just works right out of the gate, especially with, with Windows. I'm not so familiar with, with how Mac treats it, but um, anyway, so this would work right out of the gate. So 
uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to compare the two devices on how well uh, they lock onto the timecode signal. So basically the way that this is working is I've got a laptop feeding into a little small mixer that's off camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the volume and we're going to see at what point both of these devices lock onto the signal. Because all different devices, even though they might be sending out a line level signal, do not always send out the same volume. You might have a laptop, for example, that puts out a lower volume that maybe an iPad puts out. So you want to see what is the minimum volume in which something detects and how well it detects. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this XLR cable, we're going to plug it into this device. We've got a blue uh, power indicator light here and we've got another light that'll turn blue as soon as it starts, it, as soon as it locks onto the signal and has a good lock. Now the downside to this device is uh, going on the manufacturer's website and looking in the manual, uh, there's three indicator lights on here, but they don't actually explain what the indicator lights do. I've looked through the PDF that was on the website, it doesn't really go into it. I've seen these lights change a couple different colors. When you first plug it in, uh, they will go white, and I've seen them be purple, red, green, and of course blue here. So what I'm going to do is we're muted, and I'm uh, showing the signal coming into this box on this oscilloscope here. Uh, with if you look online, line voltage is anywhere between 300 millivolts and 2,000 millivolts, or two volts, uh, peak to peak. That's that's what line voltage, uh, line audio uh, is is considered, uh, or line level audio coming into to a device um, is spec'd out. So we're going to bring this up, and right now we're at about 200. Uh, just under 200 millivolts and now this this box is actually detecting and it's showing blue here and you can see that occasionally it will actually make the time code run on the lighting desk and it, it will actually detect it read it and and um, and so forth but if you look here on this blue indicator light here the light is blue uh, which would indicate to me that it's detecting time code and I, I, I'll mute this and the, the blue light turns off and we'll unmute it and we'll bring it back up and the blue light comes on and we can see it's on and it's solid and stable but the time code is not actually running on this so um, that's the first indication that I don't like about this box is is that this box um, showing that it's decoding and now it just started running you can see it's running up here and now it just cut off so this light has stayed solid it has not gone off to indicate that it had a bad lock or a bad sync um, uh, that's already a problem and now it's running again and it'll probably stop randomly yep it just stopped right there so this light is this indicator is not giving you a good indication of, of what this is decoding so that's the first problem so I'm gonna bring this way up I'm gonna bring this signal up to about 800 um, millivolts peak to peak which is should be plenty of signal. This is a good strong signal that any device should easily decode. And you can see that the light is, is still decoding and it's actually turning purple. Now I don't know what purple means because it's not in the manual. Either that means that it's an excellent signal or maybe it means that it's clipping internally. I don't know. But the the uh, the clock is, is still not running correctly and it just ran there for a second. It's not blinking purple right now. Um, it's not running so and there it goes again so maybe that means it's clipping internally my board is not clipping I'm not I'm not I'm not putting a maximum of two volts out because two volts is the maximum of line uh, a line level signal so that's not the issue I have no idea what the purple light means so let's bring that down let's bring that down to about half there's about 400 millivolts and I don't think we're blinking uh, it just ran sporadically there now sometimes you have to mute or pause and play a signal in order for the the timecode uh, decoder to lock onto that signal and, and 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 catch it so let's mute it unmute it so we're, we've got the blue light there uh, indicating that it's it should be decoding or it sees the signal and you can see here that it, it's just not running it's very unreliable and we can bring this all the way up to uh, two volts doesn't really matter I'm not getting the purple light now I don't know why uh, and it just started running and it just cut out again and now it's running again it's very sporadic it's not reliable at all so um, now I've gone into this and I thought maybe it was a phase issue uh, or, a pol or not a phase issue but um, a polarity issue I thought maybe I, maybe the signal is is flipped maybe I need to have positive and negative flipped maybe it needs to be uh, ground to to 
uh, pin two or pin three. I've tried all the different pin arrangements and you can see that it's running and it'll run sporadically, but it's just not reliable. So right now I'm at Unity on my board. I'm at zero dB. Um, everything is is right where it would be for any other type of signal, any type of audio signal, because that's all time code is, is just, a, it's an audio signal. It's a, it's a digital um, uh, signal over analog um, audio. Anyway, so we're gonna unplug that because that's not reliable, unfortunately. I'm very disappointed in that. I'm gonna bring the signal way down here to zero, uh, or to, to nothing. Um, we're going to plug in so this is going from xlr to a trs jack again um this uh motu box it uses a uh quarter inch trs jack and um so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the volume up slowly and it's not good to actually bring volume up on time code it it, it really needs to have a very sharp start and stop uh for it to catch but but it, it should still catch it so we're going to bring it up Let's go, and you're gonna be looking right here to this light right here, it says lock. That shows that it has a good time code lock. We're gonna bring that up, and you're also gonna be looking here at this. Uh, this is the time code display for this device. Uh, I just don't want to have to go into the, the hog software and, and reconfigure it to have it show up here. So it's the same thing. Um, th it's just right now, the way that everything is set up, this box is represented by this time code clock here, and then this is represented by this clock here. So we're gonna bring this up. And we can see right there, um, it shows a lock, but the time code clock is not running. Um, and again, uh, you really can't bring the audio up slowly on time code. Uh, I could bring it way up to uh, two volt, just under two volts. Now it started running. It did show that it had a lock there, but it wasn't, it wasn't running correctly. Um, sometimes what you have to do is just pause and restart, but again, you should never bring the volume up slowly on time code. It has to be start and stop very, very abruptly. So we're going to bring that down. We can see the time code clock has stopped. We're going to bring that up to about 200 millivolts peak to peak. There you go. So we've got a good lock right there. It's a very small signal. And we can see that the time code uh, uh, is, is running good. 200 millivolts is not very reliable for this. It, it will run, and it's, and it's running fairly stably. Uh, for, stably. It's running stable, but I've had it where occasionally it might glitch out just a little bit, and that's enough to kind of throw, throw your, your lighting uh, cues off. So uh, I typically run it at 300 millivolts uh, minimum just to be sure that it's got a good lock. Now, um, I'm going to pause, I'm gonna mute this, and I'm gonna unmute this, so uh, let's count it in three, two, one, unmute. And you can see that the signal has come up, and as, as soon as the signal has come up here, uh, the time code, uh, uh, the clock has started running, it's running smoothly. I'm gonna mute it right now, and it stopped instantly as the signal has come in, and I'm gonna unmute it again, three, two, one, unmute. And it, within you know a quarter of a second, half a second, this thing will lock on just like that. And that's really necessary when you're going back and you're programming the light and you're having to go back, back, rewinding and starting over to run through to make sure that all your timing is lined up. You know, you don't want to have to have it where it takes like three or five seconds for it to lock onto the signal. You need it to lock onto the signal as quickly as possible. And what's nice, again, some devices put out a very low signal. You might have a cell phone or some device that's that's giving you your time code, um, your, your SMPTE time code, and it might be a fairly weak signal. Again, not all devices put out the same uh, amount of volume. I have a laptop that puts out a very low volume, and I have another laptop that puts out a very, very strong volume out of the uh, headphone jack. Now, yes, you can use uh, audio interfaces, USB or FireWire or Thunderbolt uh, audio interfaces, but again, that's one more thing that you have to have in your um, in your bag or in, in your flight kit. And uh, sometimes in certain setups, it's not always necessary to have a full on Pro Tools, you know, you've got, you know, the, uh, the Mac Pro uh, tower with a, with a rack mounted audio interface and all this other stuff. Sometimes it's just not, it's just flat out not practical to have all that crap. And that's why I was trying to go for this little device is because this is a nice little practical device to fit in your bag. Um, and if you actually crack open any type of console, rather it be a hog or uh, a 
Grand Ame or any other lighting desk, there's basically going to be just a little circuit board about this big inside that's, you know, more than likely connected via USB or, or something or, or serial or whatever internally. Um, there's no need to have this big honking device. It's just the problem is, is that the only devices really that are on the market that are, um, uh, Simpty 2 MIDI timecode converters, decoders, essentially, that are as generic as these that will work with anything. Like, sure, you can buy a widget for a uh, uh, for hog it's a thousand dollars you know you can buy uh, a decoder for a um uh like let's say a, a martin lighting desk of some sort you can buy con uh, uh decoders for those for those uh, uh solutions however you know you're going to be spending a lot of money you know um i'm just trying to get something that can be ran on any pc and you don't have to worry about drivers and issues and all that other stuff so unfortunately with the motu you do have to have their dedicated uh clockworks software in order for it to work however uh you can see that this clock is is running extremely reliable and the only reason that this is rolled over is the track that i have playing with the time code is actually on a loop so it's going to go up to about five minutes and then it's going to restart to uh zero zero so and you can see that this is running reliably this has got a very small signal and I'll even bring it all the way up to, um, you know, two volts peak to peak, and it's still running perfectly reliable. We'll mute it, and it stops instantly, and we'll unmute it, and it'll start playing instantly as soon as that signal comes up here. So unfortunately, uh, going to be sending back this device. I was really, really, really hoping that this device was going to solve a lot of my issues, the form factor, the power, the drivers, all these different things that you have to have, but you know, I might just have it where on the front of this uh, box, I might just uh, uh, Velcro a uh, USB stick or something just to make sure that, you know, if I have a different device uh, that I can, you know, uh, always have the software. The other benefit to this, uh, which is kind of nice, is say for example if you actually had two computers, uh, two lighting computers, if this was a mission critical setup or you had two lighting desks and you were just trying to get MIDI into the device, um, now obviously if a console, if you have a full-size console more than likely it's going to have a dedicated uh, SMPTE decoder built into it, but say it didn't. What you can do with this device, um, rather it be the, the micro um, or the, the XT, the beauty is is that once you feed this in uh, time code, uh, SMPTE time code, uh, you actually have six outputs, and I think this one has eight outputs. And you can see what I've done here is I've actually come out of this and I've plugged it directly into this generic uh, MIDI to USB converter. Um, you can plug this box into your secondary lighting computer, laptop, whatever, and you could actually have it where your Pro Tools or your whatever is feeding the, the SMPTE timecode or the audio timecode into here, and you could break out to six or eight devices, eight lighting desks, or maybe you have, for example, you could actually have it where... Um, uh, output number one is feeding desk uh, lighting desk one your primary and then uh, you've got another one of these little um, generic boxes going to your to your backup lighting computer and I've done that before uh, where this was the primary uh, decoder and and then I had two of these boxes because see these boxes only cost like twenty dollars um, and then you could have the third output of this could be going to your pyro or to your uh, to your cryo cannons or they could be going to uh, you know you might have some controller and most controllers have some sort of MIDI input I mean even lighting desks have MIDI input uh, so you could be maybe feeding it into your to your uh, audio desk you know your your mixer uh, and that could be uh, I, I don't know if if audio desks have uh, MIDI time code or if it's just notes that change scenes uh, somebody could comment down below um, but uh, you know they do have I do know that they have MIDI inputs uh, and, and the stage boxes have MIDI inputs I just think that uh, the scenes they change on notes not necessarily time code but maybe they do maybe the newer ones do I have no idea I mean even older consoles have MIDI in um, but uh, that's never been a thing for me uh, so anyway long story short this should have been and again we'll plug this in just just in closing bang the the lights on why this one is turning green again i have no idea uh, it, it's running it's running a little bit 
But the lights stay blue. They don't change colors when, when it starts to work. It's so weird. It's so disappointing. I really wanted this to work. I really wanted this to be my solution because this is so much smaller and, and, and it, it checks all the check marks that I want. Maybe there's a factory defect in this. Who knows? You know, we don't know. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to be making more videos about production equipment and what I use on a daily basis and the best practices that I've come up with over the years to make my life easier um, and make things more um smooth and and yada 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 so if you're interested in this type of stuff lighting uh automation uh production in general or just general uh technology things uh, i'm going to be doing a lot more videos so stay tuned for that i'm also going to be uh to be putting affiliate links to help out the channel for uh, these devices so if you're interested in either of these devices even though this one doesn't work uh, I'm going to be putting that down in the description and uh, stay tuned for more and if you've made it to the end of this long rant demo of this stuff uh, I really appreciate your time and watching and uh, thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video take care